I haven't really thought about competitive surfing too much for a while. Yeah, I enjoyed competing for sure. I'm a I'm a competitive person, but uh, surfing meant to me when I was when I was younger, getting out there and surfing with my dad, and not just him, but his friends and the people, the community down the beach and all that sort of thing, to get involved in the surfing community was, was a big thing for me. It's, it's sort of like an active meditation where you hit the water and time just disappears and you get out, no matter what problem you had before you went in the water, you come out and nothing seems as bad. The change in my surfing when I started competing was that I got a bit more serious. I'd just been doing it for a long time and I kind of lost the drive and because I have quite a competitive nature, I found it a double-edged sword where, you know, you could do all the prep, you could go to a competition and you could do really well or you could, you could bomb out. Any sport that's judged is always hard because there's so many different elements in it, who wins and I found that quite difficult. I sort of started out making boards in the backyard with my dad when I was about 13. 15 I went to work full time in a surfboard factory. I didn't live near the beach and I couldn't surf. I was probably only getting in the water once or twice a week. I started making surfboards because it was my way of being involved with surfing when I couldn't surf. The type of shaping that I do I, I view as an art form and a dying art in that because when I started it was just on the transition where the industry was going towards machine shaping. I'm the last generation to learn this style of board making. The amount of energy and time and love I put into a board it can't sort of be replicated. Surfboard building is a very personal thing for me. I have no limitations of where my surfing can go because if I picture something in my head I can bring it to life and, and then put it to action in the water. That's where the addiction with board making comes. You make one and it works and then you want to make an improvement and it's just, you're always thinking about the next board and the next thing and the next thing you want to try, you know, so it, that's the really fun side of it for me. And uh, yeah, that's perpetual, that's, that's endless. Yeah, I have a pretty big connection to my boards. I have a big belief that like working with your hands and working with good intention, when you make something, it takes on a certain energy. And I believe that, especially when I'm making them for friends or people I know, they're always the best boards because they're made with love. And then I've got guys that I've been shaping for for 15, 20 years. My dad's best mate, I've been making him boards for 20 years. You know, I was making him boards when I was 15 years old and now I'm 35 and, and I'm still making his boards. Just the constant refining and the ongoing relationship I have with them and their boards, it's, it's really quite special. When I was surfing competitions a lot, there was a lot of pressure to surf a certain way because you're surfing to impress the judges or to score the highest, but steering away from the competition, when I get a blank, my surfing can be anything. I can make the board as big or as small as I like. It's more about the feeling you get inside, not what people are seeing from the beach. The actual competing, I'm not as interested in, but just Funnily enough, when you're enjoying your surfing, you're generally surfing better anyway, so it's, it's nice to not be taking surfing too serious and, and just treat it like a lifestyle choice.